All right, so let's take a look at this. We've got sales of January, February, March, and April, and April's cut off there by me. <laughs> it's 21,000 that's showing in there. You should have it on your printout. Um, the idea is that's this, our sales budget. That is what we're projecting to sell in those months, 20,000, 22, 25, 21. They said Miles estimates it will begin the year with 3,000 units in inventory. The company wants to end each month with inventory equal 25% of the next month's sales, project, prepare production budget January through March. Okay, so I set this up over here on my, for myself um, just because it's a little bit easier if I gave it a little bit of structure. Let me draw one. Okay, so the idea is I'm going to start off Let's see. I can use my pen in a while. Ooh. And of course, right away I mess up. Okay. All right. So we're going to start off. We're going to draw a line here. And we're going to have January, February, March. And I think that's all they wanted you to do. Those three months. Okay. So their expected sales in January were 20,000 units, right? That's how many we plan on selling set per the above. But I want, I don't want to just make what I'm selling. I want to make a little bit more, right? I want to end each month with inventory equal to 25% of the next month's sales. So basically I want to work a little ahead, if you will. So let me just go through and put the sales into January, February, March, because it looks like we're going to need those numbers. 22,000 and March is 25,000. And I think we're going to need those April numbers now that I know I have to look a month forward as well. Okay, so I want to make what I need for the current month, plus I want to make a little bit extra. I want to make 25% of the next month's projected sales. So I want to get a head start on my February numbers. So 22,000 times 25% is going to be 5,500. Okay, great. So that means that I need to make in January 25,500 units. All right, Ooh, that's, I'm a little bit off here. Um, those are the total units that I need, sorry. All right, now, okay, I need to make 25,500, but are my shelves bare? Meaning like, from what was, what happened in December? Do I still have some left over from December do, or do I may have to make all 25,500? If the answer is yeah, that you have absolutely nothing on your shelves from the previous month, then okay, great. Then we need to make 25,500. But it actually tells me up above, I'm beginning the year with 3,000 units already inventory. So great. I need 25,500. I already have 3,000 sitting on my shelves from the previous month. So really what I need to make this month is 22,500 units. All right, so moving on to February here. Same idea. March, I'm making. Oh, March, I'm making twenty-five thousand or twenty. Ugh, sorry. Um, my daughter's screwing me up. She's texting me from downstairs. <laughs> okay, so February comes along, and I and I plan on selling twenty-two thousand units, which you can see at the top. I want to make some extra for March. All right, I want to have twenty-five percent of the next month's already made. So 25,000 at 25%, we're looking at 6,250. So we add those guys together. The total units I need are going to be 28,250, but I have some already, right? So I need 28,250 from February, from February, but I actually have some left over from January because remember I worked ahead in January. Well, I worked ahead in January. I made 5,500 extra. Okay. So I started January with 3,000, but I plan on ending January with an extra 5,500. So really, I need 28,250, and I've already got 5,500 sitting on my shelves ready to go. So really, this month, I need to make 22,750. Okay, one more time. We're going to do March, and I'm going to move on to the next step. So March, um, I need 25,000. I also need 25% of April's numbers, which is 5,250. Yes, I have the answers on my paper. All right, uh, that winds up being 30,250. And now I say, okay, well, I need 30,250. How many do I have left over from February? Well, I have left over from February 6,250. So I don't have to make those. That was the number, that was the amount that I kind of worked ahead. So we need, I feel like my number is not good. 30,250. I need my calculator now. Minus, every account has a calculator, right? 
on their desk. Oh yeah, okay, my number's good. All right, so I need 24,000 in March. All right, so you get the idea. We've just created the production budget. Now we're gonna take it a step further and we're gonna say, okay, well let now that we have done that, so remember we're doing these budgets here, now that we've come up with the production budget, I need to do direct materials and direct labor budget. I mentioned in the last one we are not doing the factory red budget, just because every company does it differently. It's not as quite as objective, the data. So anyway, that's where we're sticking with. That's my story. I'm sticking with it. All right. So now we're doing the same kind of setup here. I'm going to pause you guys so I can kind of, I'm going to set up the same thing he, that I did here just so we can follow along with it. All right, so I kind of set this up. It's very similar to what we just did in the first one. Um, the idea is that I set it up for you so you didn't have to read through my handwriting. Okay, it says prepare the direct materials budget based on for January and February using the previous problem. Each unit, okay, so materials required for production. We're going to set it up as January and February. All right, now the thing is materials required for production. I plan on producing 22,500 in the month of January. Now you might think, all right, so 22,500. No, that's the number of units I'm producing. That is not the, that is not the units I need. What I need is I need to know how many pounds or how many, how many pounds of materials I need or how many gallons of material I need. That's the trick here. And I can't even tell you that is the like number one stumbling, stumbling block in these problems. I'm not looking, when I'm saying materials required for production, I'm saying the 22,500 that I plan on producing times two, because I need two pounds of materials for each one. So that winds up being 45,000 pounds. Okay, so really it's 22,500 for January times two pounds. That's where you come up with that 45,000 number. Okay, so now, now is when it starts to look a little similar. Plus the desiring and inventory, right? I want to keep some inventory on my shelves. So it says that I'll have um, 4,000 pounds on January 1st. Hang on to that. But my desired ending inventory for materials, 5,000 pounds. The idea is I never want to have empty shelves, right? So I want to have some materials left over. So in total, I need 50,000 pounds of material. Minus my estimated beginning inventory, right? Because I came into January with something. It says we came into January 4,000 pounds of materials already on my shelves. So we're going to subtract that, which means I have to have 46,000 pounds of materials purchased for the month of January. Now, 46,000 pounds, they tell me the unit price is 60 cents per pound above in number two there. So I, in January, I need to spend $27,600 on direct materials. Okay, so let's go through February. I'll go through a little quicker. And I did with February, if you went back up to the previous problem, which I'll do real quick, I was planning on making 22,750 for February. But it's not 22,750, it's 22,750 times two because you need two pounds of materials for each one. So 45,500 pounds of materials. Plus I want to end with 5,000 pounds as my norm, right? That's what we're saying. So I really need 50,500 pounds. And I should have some from the previous month's inventory, 5,000 pounds. So really I need to send my purchasing people out there to buy me 45,500 pounds at a rate of 60 cents a pound. You're looking at $27,300 of materials. Okay, so that's how we do the direct materials one. Let's move on to the last one, the direct labor budget. Ooh, and I went up, let me get this all back. All right, I'm going to pause you guys so I can get that set up for you. All right, so I have it set up for you again. Again, we're looking at January and February. So let's put that in there. And we're saying how much labor is, how much is labor going to cost? Well, it says it takes 0.25, a quarter of an hour to make one unit. Okay, and this is the other stumbling, stumbling block here, is figuring that piece out. So the units to be produced are actually 22,500 for January. But it doesn't take an hour a unit. It takes a quarter of an hour a unit per unit. So you're going to be looking at this in the, as percentages of an hour. Like if they told you 15 minutes, 15 minutes is 15 over 60. That's a quarter of an hour. So you have to be careful. The idea is you're putting this into hours. So 22,500 units times 0.25. 
total hours for production, 56.25, times the hourly, which that's hours, right? Times the hourly rate, people are making $13 an hour. There we go. So the total direct labor cost for January is going to be 73,125. Okay, we do the same thing for February. We were planning on making 22,750 units, right? That's coming right from that production report or production uh, budget. Again, times a quarter of an hour. Gives you 5,687.5 times the $13 an hour. And the direct labor cost is 73,937.5. Okay. So that's the end of that little example, and we'll move on to the third video in just a minute.